Just off the east bank of the Cumberland River and across the water from the Tennessee State Capitol building, there's a look at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. The whole of downtown Nashville likely still reverberating with the sounds of the Titans taking the field a moment ago. They're ready for football as their teams are set to match up with the Baltimore Ravens. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. This is Derek Henry. And he's upended after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. Now these two teams, of course, the Titans and Ravens, met in the postseason a year ago. And, and really, along with the Titans win the previous week in Foxborough, it was one of the shockers of the postseason. The Titans, a sixth seed on the road. The Ravens, they were the top seed, riding a 12-game win streak and coming off the first round bye. But... Well, that game was all Tennessee. They led 28-6 at one point, ultimately winning 28-12 and sending them on to the AFC title game in Kansas City. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. Tannehill on first down. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. Uses the stiff arm. And getting this just shy of midfield. They'll spot it at the 49. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. I remember watching Derrick Henry come out of Alabama and sitting with some scouts, and one of the debate points with him was, while at Bama, how often did he have to deal with contact near the line of scrimmage? They were so good up front that he often got to the second level pretty easily. I think he's starting to answer those questions with runs like that. He's a physical, physical guy. They keep it with Henry on first down. And across midfield he goes into Raven territory. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Another two-yard gain there, but they'll need to do better this time. It's third and six. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. And this is intercepted. He was trying to get it to Davis. Picked off by the Pro Bowler, Marcus Peters. And he will take it across midfield and down to the 45. Jackson going to look to do it himself. The quick feet by Jackson. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. Just like that, a pickup of 20 on their first play from scrimmage. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sank back of the 29. Jack Crawford in there to get him. It's a loss of five. Tell you what, he did not have much time there to skin the field before he was ducking and covering. Did it appear to you, as it did to me, that the defensive front won their play really quickly, meaning the guys in front of them had almost no chance to block them? They were on him in a hurry. Now a quick slant as the throw's complete. The reception good for seven. It's third down. 
You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. On third down, Jackson forced out to his left. He can run for it, and he will. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. He was able to get away earlier in the drive, but apparently all the time they put in practice finally came to the front, didn't it? They remembered their lessons and found a way to contain him when he took off on that one. Tucker's kick is good. And the Ravens strike first at three zip. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. Yeah, but bottom line, they wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. And this will make it into the end zone. And no return here for Evans as they will bring this out to the 25. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, only gave up three points off of that, so it shouldn't be a difficult hole to overcome. It really shouldn't as long as they're not listening to the chatter coming from the other side because when you throw a pick, look, I know defensive backs. They have a tendency to be a little bit loud after they take one away, but they also have a tendency to gamble a little bit more, thinking they'll get a second one. Maybe they can take advantage of that with some double moves. Linebacker Patrick Queen bringing him down. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. He's going deep for Brown. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. I know he wants to get his team back in the game, but a 50-50 ball right there that maybe was a little questionable. Yeah, he's pretty lucky to get that one back. I think that sometimes these quarterbacks play with a lot of confidence that borders on arrogance, and that can put your team in some Dutch. Yeah, especially maybe want to look at some safer routes after the interception he had that ended their last drive. He's going to try and go deep again. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Picked off by Marlon Humphrey, and he'll take it across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. They'll run for the first time with J.K. Dobbins. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. The tackle was by the Boston College product, Harold Landry. Well, every now and then, we have to let a cliche fly partner. And in this case, what do they say in the NFL? Your best ability is often your availability. This is an extremely durable kid coming out of Ohio State. Carried the ball every time they even thought about running it. Wore down defenses and able to break big runs late in games. J.K. Dobbins going to Baltimore, an absolute perfect fit. They follow up the first down one yard run with a minimal gain of two. They'll need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is here on third. Jackson from the shotgun. Buying time to his left. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. And they had an extra defensive back on the field on that play, and the coverage was excellent. He tried to pull it down and run for it, but they rallied to him and kept him short of a first down. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this score will stay right where it is. Let's do it. Everything looked good. 
good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. He'll start with a give to Henry. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Well, they did throw interceptions on their last two drives, so no surprise at all they decided to start it with a running play. I'm actually a little bit surprised, though, that they got as much out of it as they did. Yeah, decent little gain. Puts them in a pretty good spot for second down. The last run got six, now second and four. Tannehill with a play fake to Henry. He'll throw instead. He'll get this to his tight end. It's Jonu Smith. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 12 yards there and a first down. So finally completes his first pass. Credit the defense, though. They've been showing him some different looks, keeping him off balance. Yeah, I like, it. I like the observation that you had there because when you give him different looks and give any quarterback different looks, it takes just a little bit longer to process sometimes, and you don't throw the ball with the same confidence. You're not sure that that's where you should go with the football, and that's worked for the defense early in this game. And now he's got his first completion. Let's see if his confidence comes back, and he starts to get into a nice little groove. Now second and 11 from the 32. Here's Tannehill. And this is going to be incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Out of the gun, Tannehill. He's got it complete, Derrick Henry. And Henry's hit. He lost the football, and it's picked up by the Ravens. There he goes left side. And this is going to be brought back for a Baltimore touchdown. Even the great ones, some of the best, they're not immune to the fumble, and here it really hurts them. If the ball gets away from any runner's body, that's when the defense pokes at it, swipes at it, swats at it, and finds a way to create a big play for themselves. On fourth down, here's Steven Goskowski for the Tennessee field goal. It'll come from the right hash. It's a 47-yard attempt. And this one is right down Broadway. And that'll do it for the first quarter of play. These two teams all tied after one. Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And they've got to be a little bit frustrated about that last drive. Missed field goal. Always hurts a team because, you know, you've put something out there. You've given yourself a chance. You're in range, and the ball doesn't go through the post. But it's not something to panic about, I don't believe. Just keep playing and keep going. The drive will commence with a run by J.K. Dobbins. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Jackson with a handoff to Dobbins on the option. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Option play, and they'll hand to Dobbins. And it was a stiff arm there that freed him enough to get the first before he's tackled. 
Got what they needed there. The drive continues with a nine-yard pickup. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have a few men in the box there. Stepping up, he'll try and run. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. This time, Jackson will throw it. Rolling to his left. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. The officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. So now factoring in the face mask, here's first and 10. Dobbins going to take the handoff on the option. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. What's that, five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. On second and nine, Jackson. They set up the screen for Dobbins. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. To throw is Jackson. They'll roll him out right. And now he's going to use his legs. And this time not quite to the 30. He'll be down at the 31-yard line. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. Yeah, he only gets a few yards on first and ten, but he's better off doing that than throwing an incompletion or even worse, an interception. Here's second and nine. Jackson on the give to Dobbins, and he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. They got to get it to the 21 here on third down. From the gun, it's Jackson. Steps away to his left. He may try and run for this. And this will not get close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the 26. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. Here's Justin Tucker now for the Raven field goal try. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And the Ravens strike first at three zip. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. Ten-play drive, but they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made them kick a field goal. And for the offense, ten-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. now following the main field goal set to kick it away that'll be taken about a yard deep and they'll get him down right at the 25 yard line so the same result had he opted for the touchback here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively and after the field goal last time we'll see what they can get here at least they got points out of the last drive Charles I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. 
Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive down with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Yeah, another negative play in an early down situation. This one to start the drive. You're putting a lot of pressure on your quarterback to bail you out when you're in second and long yardage. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. From the gun, here's Tannehill. He'll get this complete to Batson. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. The catch and run there, good for 16 and a first. When you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Corey Davis, the intended receiver, but it'll be second down. Well, their first two drives only yielded three points. They might be thinking it's time to make something happen, push the ball downfield, and try and gain some points that way. Unfortunately, incomplete. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Tannehill. And he finds Corey Davis. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 44 yard line. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 44 yard line. 10th carry now for Derrick Henry. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Here's second and ten. Now it's Tannehill. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 17-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. The first red zone opportunity for the Titans. They've got a first and 10 at the 17. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Here's Tannehill. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he yeah, read that as yeah, soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, that. knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. Let's get this point. And a 14-year trusty veteran able to knock it through. And that will knock things up here late in the first half. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high.
So back even at six apiece as the kicks away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And we're under a minute to go here. What's been an even first half all tied up? Yeah, still time to make something happen, too. A couple completions, you string them together, could get in the field goal range. Let's see what happens. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the gun, Jackson. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. To throw again, Jackson. That's caught by the former Sooner, Mark Andrews. And he's going to have a first down here as they're also into field goal range at the 28. It's a first down on a gain of 10. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Final play of the half here. It's Jackson. A throw over the middle caught by Bryant. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. So we have reached halftime here with not much scoring between these two teams. 6-6 six, six our score. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Second half starts with a run by Dobbins. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. To throw on second and six. Jackson out left side here to Bryant. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. He'll buy some time right. He's going to take off with it. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. He'll get three yards on the scramble there. It's second down. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. Throwing again on second down. Jackson. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. So, Charles, tie game here. What are your keys as we continue to play this second half? I know people think it's always trite when you say the same things over and over, but they're tried and true in the game of football. Who's going to block better? Who's going to tackle better? In this case, to me, it's turnovers. You've got to take care of the football in order to win the game. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Yeah. Jeffrey Simmons in there to get him for a loss of three, and it will be fourth down. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. On is the putter, Cook, who sends it away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Titans will be backed up deep to begin the drive as they take over first and 10. 
Out come the Titans now. They'll have it first on offense to start the third. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to. How did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. To throw is Tannehill. And he's going to go down. Back at his own five-yard line, it's a sack. That's Yannick Ngakwe with a sack. We are seeing two really confident defenses imposing their will on these offenses in this game. Yeah, absolutely, going toe for toe. Just curious if one of these offenses can wake up a little bit. Is there any way they can find something that can pop, something big to knock them back on their heels? That's complete to his tight end, Ferkser. And they'll get him down right at around the 11-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. Here's Brett Kern now, as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. A 45-yard punt, four there on the return, and the Ravens will take over. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. The last couple of drives have ended in punts. Maybe the crowd minds that, but you're a defensive guy. You're okay with a couple of punt drives. Listen, I'm the guy that loves a 0-0 pitch game. All right, in baseball, I can handle that going into the seventh inning. I think the crowd, though, they want to see a little bit more excitement. Let's see if someone can break something free on offense and get going. Offense at a premium the last two drives. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. They'll go again with Dobbins. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 12 yards there and a first down. Well, I can certainly tell my age, partner, because when I was a kid, running backs like J.K. Dobbins with over 2,000 yards in their final season in college, they went early in the draft. Instead, he somehow lasted until the second round. But how great is it to get a guy with that ability who can run it inside, run to the perimeter, and catch the football in the backfield, to be able to get him in the second round? That's what I call a steal. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Off the play fake to Dobbins. Here's Jackson. He'll run it. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. Offensively, they liked their situation, so they tried to take a shot downfield, but no one was open. So it was tuck it in run time, and he picks up a first down. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and 10 here. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? On second and seven, Jackson over the middle here to Brown. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. What is this? Oh, my God, I can't believe what I'm watching. A field goal would get him the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. 
An option handoff here to Dobbins. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. The six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. Jackson now. Toward the pylon, caught. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Lamar Jackson hooking up with Mark Andrews. And the Ravens have broken the tie. For good reason, quarterbacks want to get the ball to the perimeter to their wide receivers for big plays. But in this situation, it felt like, based on coverage, he knew that he wanted his tight end to have the football, and for good reason. And it's up and good to extend the lead to 13-6. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will make it into the end zone. And no return here for Evans as they will bring this out to the 25. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. A throw left side to start out. That's complete. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Three yards the game there, second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. To throw again on second down, Tannehill. He'll get this one complete. That's A.J. Brown. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. Yeah, Henry fighting for the marker, but I don't think he got there. He did not. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. So possession goes over here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and ten. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. The drive will start with an option going left. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. Two yards the loss, second and 12. on this third quarter of play. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Behind the chain, second and 12. Operating from the gun. 
Jackson on the move to his left. Now he'll pull it down. And he'll take this across the 25 before going out of bounds. And give him 10 that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice game. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can. And that's what he's done very well in this game. The Ravens on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This time they face a third and two. On third and short, they'll try option left. And he's not even going to get back to the line he's of so scrimmage. Good. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Well, he's had success running the football in this one, and that's undeniable. But that time, the defense was on to it. And, partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return, and it'll be Titan football. The Titans now just about ready to take over, and they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Tannehill now to throw. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really on to something there in this passing game. It just can't get off the ground. And that play, it wound up losing yardage. Third and long, it's Tannehill. He's got a man complete. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. That was no third and two. That was third and 16, but they get the conversion anyway. First down, it's Tannehill. Smith catches left side. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. And that is incomplete here. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Pick it up. You're embarrassing. Here we go, here we go. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Again, Tannehill. And his throw is going to be incomplete. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. <laughs> Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 22-yard line. That good for 19 yards as they pick up the conversion on third. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Now throwing on first down and completing it. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Three yards the gain there, second down. Yeah. 
Tannehill throwing again. Henry's got it out on the left side. And he is out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll lead here to a third down. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why, what we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play, one-on-one -on -one matchup if someone's trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball, they think they're going to win those too. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. They snap it to Tannehill. And no, it's incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. And they've now made two trips to the red zone and still looking for their first touchdown. Not able to punch it in. And if you're on defense, your confidence is sky high. Because mentally, you're saying, hey, hey you're in the red zone. We're thinking we're giving up three. We just want to give up six. In this case, they end up not giving up the touchdown at all. They've got to feel great about what they got done. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard, and it's second down. Jackson from the shotgun. He's going deep for Brown. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. The Ravens on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is third and nine from the gun. Jackson. And that will be incomplete. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. Here's Sam Cook now, standing just outside his own goal line. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And the Titans getting set to go. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball. And then all of a sudden, it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, that, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Out of the gun, Tannehill. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. After that incompletion, I almost get the sense that he's going to look up at the booth and, and kind of look at us and say, hey, you guys got any suggestions? It's been that kind of game, hasn't it? They've had him on the run throughout. Yeah, and I get that you're trying to make a play here losing fourth quarter, but to throw when you're not set with pressure coming could have been an interception. Very much so, and it's been that kind of game for him. They've had him on the run, had him off balance. He's got to find a way to make some big-time throws down the stretch. 
He was trying to get it to A.J. Brown that time, but now it's third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. And that is caught, but he will come down out of bounds, says the side judge, incomplete. We've seen that the deep ball's been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it, unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. So they went to the booth to see if that was a touchdown, and they have decided it will not be a touchdown. Six points off the board. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. On the left hash, this from 48 yards. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle, and that'll bring them back within four. So an interesting call there to take the three. I mean, I guess they're thinking that their hands were tied, but, you know, fourth quarter, that field goal might not help them that much in the end. Yeah, eventually they're going to need the touchdown. The thinking must have been they didn't feel confident about picking it up there, hoping maybe on defense they can get better field position, get a turnover, get a better play, and then they'll have a chance to attack the end zone. Koski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. Taken in at the three. Oh, a good return up past the 30. And a great return. Solid field position. He's up all the way to the 45-yard line. Any return that gets you to midfield is a great return. One first down, and you're almost in field goal position. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at the 45. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. Looking sideline, incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Jackson, he's going to keep it himself. And he's up over midfield and down into Tennessee territory. That'll leave him with a third on, and two go. coming up. They got eight yards there. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up with the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. They'll try to run for it with Dobbins. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. And they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll take this one down to the 36. 
Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. set up the screen for Dobbins and he'll be brought down losing yardage back at the 40 a rough go there on third down a loss of four I love the intelligence the defense just showed there read their keys saw the screen developing ran to it and smothered it what a third down stop by them is good from 57 yards out. That was bombs away right there. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted, but I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Mm -hmm. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent, that we made them specialists. Yeah, and now those 50 plus yarders seem easy for some reason. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. So now Tannehill and the Titans down by seven. Exactly one minute remaining. They need a touchdown to the PAT to tie it as they come up first and ten. Tannehill now to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try and throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. Tannehill. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. He'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. Now Tannehill. But it's caught on the right side at Smith. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Ravens get the football back and in great shape. The Ravens offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And they've got this one in hand. No timeouts remaining defensively, so this one should just be one kneel and then handshakes. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Down to Anigos Jackson, and that should seal it. 
Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And it was their defense that led the way, allowing just three points, that lone field goal in the entire second half. And remember the old adage, offense sells tickets. Defense does what? Wins championships. And in this game, maybe a championship wasn't won, but a game was by the defense, right? Held them to just a field goal? That's a heck of a job. I mean, when they went out there with that determination and a pretty good game plan, pretty good idea of what they wanted to accomplish, just love the execution, love the tenacity, love the way they finished. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we sign off from Nashville.